So I believe the evidence of harms from seed oils are convincing enough to discourage their consumption. So the consumption of seed oils began to rise in the early 1900s, well-timed to have a causal role in the heart disease epidemic. And it's not just this association that suggests their consumption is problematic. Four randomised controlled trials, the gold standard of research, have demonstrated harms from consuming seed oils. In this study from 1965, patients post-heart attack were randomly allocated to one of three groups. There were two intervention groups consuming a daily supplement of either olive or corn oil and a control group on a regular diet. And after two years, 75% of the subjects in the control group remained free of repeat heart attacks, compared to 57% and 52% of those in the olive and corn oil groups, respectively. Hardly a ringing endorsement for olive or corn oil. The conclusion of the investigators was quite blunt, being that corn oil cannot be recommended for the treatment of ischemic heart disease. And in my opinion, this study also raises questions about olive oil. Now, the Sydney Diet Heart Study was a randomised controlled trial examining the effect of replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat in men who'd had heart attacks. But despite being finished in 1973, the results regarding whether the intervention reduced cardiac mortality were destined to never actually be published. And it was only after Dr Chris Ramsden uncovered the raw study data on punch cards and magnetic tapes in a basement that the full results were finally published some 40 years later. The key finding being that the increased intake of polyunsaturated fats, as found in seed oils, increased the risk of death in these men by 62%. A similar story exists for the Minnesota coronary experiment, which also finished in 1973. Now, this was a double-blinded, randomised control trial on more than 9,000 men and women, again evaluating the effect of increasing polyunsaturated fats while reducing saturated fat. And again, there was an inexplicable delay in publishing the full findings. It took 16 years to publish a somewhat redacted version of the study findings. And again, a very similar story. The mortality data from the Minnesota coronary experiment, which was completed in 1973, was not published until 2016. And when the results were finally published 43 years later, after the raw data was located by Dr. Chris Ramsden, that same chap again, it was revealed that increased seed oil intake increased the chance of death, a result that was knowingly hidden for decades. And when the now deceased lead author was asked about this delay, he explained it was because they found the results disappointing. <laughs> now more recently, we have the Women's Health Initiative study, published first in 2006, it was a massive study of over 48,000 females destined, designed to be definitively ass assess the benefits of lowering saturated fat and increasing polyunsaturated fat intake. And the most important outcome clearly being that of survival. And while the results were technically published, they were done so in a very obscure, some would say suspicious manner. Almost like the authors didn't want anyone to actually see them. This vague sentence on page 661 of the publication was the single reference to the only statistically significant finding of the whole paper. The finding being that females with a history of heart disease faced a 26% increased chance of complications, complications like heart attacks, if they followed a low saturated fat diet. Furthermore, the most recent published data on the Women's Health Initiative demonstrates that this risk to the low-fat intervention group has only increased over time to between 47 and 61% increased risk 